Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AdamyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at applied equilibrium uh, and we're going to look at the Haber process and the production of methanol and ethanol. Now all of these reactions are obviously industrially important. Uh, I'm going to go through each one of them and talk about the compromises that we have to make here. Because compromise is the key word here. But because it's applied, we have to talk about business. Now in business, the whole point of business is to make money. And obviously in the chemical industry, um, money is um, derived from what the product that you make and how much you make and how quickly you make it. So when we actually um, do these reactions here, we're going to come refer back to this kind of acronym, which is PSYCH. Uh, and that's the speed, how quick the product can actually be made, and the yield, which is how much, because uh, obviously you want to produce a lot of it, uh, and the cost, how much does it cost to actually make this product. And through each of these steps, I'm going to uh, guide you through and show you kind of the compromises that are made and explain it in terms of equilibrium and Le Chatelier, because the chemical reactions don't always necessarily work in the company's favour to make money. So uh, we're going to explain the compromises that have to be made. So we're going to start with this, which is the Haber process. Now, this was a process that was developed in Germany uh, around about the First World War by Fritz Haber and Karl Bosch. Uh, and these two um, chemists were an engineer, so actually Karl Bosch was a chemical engineer. Um, they actually came up with this, um, this reaction. Now, the reaction actually had sinister beginnings. Um, it was initially started, um, obviously at the time Germany was at war, uh, and it was initially started for food production and actually explosives as well. And they were using ammonia to make explosives. But actually, um, obviously after that, this is probably one of the most vital um, chemical reactions that's probably ever been discovered, mainly because of its use as a fertilizer, um, and it helps to um, product since the introduction of this, we've been, been able to make a lot more food uh, globally and feed an, an ever-increasing population. So um, this is arguably like, very, very important. So um, the Haber process works in a really simple way. Uh, we've got nitrogen, we've got hydrogen, and we make ammonia, which is NH3. Now, you can see that this reaction is exothermic, um, going in the forward direction. So I'm just going to put that on there. Um, so this is exothermic. You can see this is uh, minus 92 kilojoules per mole. So if it's exothermic in the forward direction, then this means it's actually endothermic in the reverse direction. So I'm just going to put endo on there and put the blue arrow on to show that it's endothermic. Now, um, I've got to say, I'll say this now actually, um, if you're not sure on, um, on equilibrium in terms of temperature, pressure, concentration, etc., um, it would be a good idea to have an understanding of that before we actually do this. And there is a video on that, so if you just click on the link below, uh, and you can have a look at that first. But uh, for this video, I'm going to assume that you know uh, about Le Chatelier's principle already. Okay, so you can see this is endothermic. Now, in, uh, in industry, you're wanting to produce this thing as quickly as possible. Um, and the yield, you've got to increase it and have it quite large as well. So you can see here, to increase the yield, um, if we increase the temperature of this reaction, um, then actually what will happen is the uh, equilibrium will shift to the left, uh, which means you produce less product. But increasing the temperature means that the reaction happens quickly. So um, effectively, you've kind of got a, a bit of a dilemma here. The fact that you want to produce this as quickly as possible, this is your product, but you want to produce as much of it as you can. But you can see in this case that we can't have that. As we increase the temperature, Le Chatelier's principle says that it will, um, the reaction will shift to oppose that change, so it will shift in the endothermic direction, which is on the left-hand side. That means that our yield of ammonia will actually decrease, but if we cool the temperature down, then we'll produce lots of ammonia because it, the equilibrium will shift in the exothermic direction and produce lots of ammonia, but it will take ages to actually make that ammonia because the rate obviously slows down um, if we decrease the temperature. So we have a bit of an issue here, and um, the industry has to um, try and come up with a compromise. And the compromise they come up with is um, the temperature, which is 397 degrees Celsius. Now, there's another aspect that we can use for equilibrium. Because this is a gas, we can actually talk about pressure as well. So if we increase the pressure, then um, equilibrium will actually shift to the side with the fewest number of gaseous moles, and in this case, that's actually on the right-hand side. So you'd think, right, well, obviously that's quite favourable, so we have a high pressure to try and produce more product. 
But there is a problem. Higher pressure means that costs a lot more, and that's where the cost bit comes in. The reason why is because you have to build a, a manufacturing facility that has thicker pipes um, to sustain this high pressure. And thicker pipes means more materials needed to make it, and that's an extra cost. And also to um, pressurize the material in the first place is quite costly as well. So um, that's not actually a, a very good thing as well. But generally, the pressure is very high. This is about 200 atmospheres of pressure, or 20,000 kilopascals. So that's very important as well. But to help the industry, obviously, you can do something which will speed up this reaction. Um, and it's how it, as a compromise of having a lower temperature, they can introduce a catalyst. And the catalyst has no effect on equilibrium, but it will speed up the rate at which equilibrium is established. So that's effectively the dilemma of the Haber process. And just make sure you understand that, because this is an applied process. And think about the cost implications, the yield, and the speed of the reaction. It's very similar for ethanol and methanol as well. Um, now, ethanol and methanol are good fuels, and particularly methanol, um, which we'll come on to in a minute, but they are um, greener fuels. So um, this can be made by reacting ethene with steam, um, and the steam uh, will react with the ethene to form ethanol. Uh, you can see this, again, this reaction is exothermic, so that means in the forward direction, um, this is an exothermic process, so put exo on there. And in the reverse process, um, it's got to be endothermic because that's just the opposite. So this is the same as the Haber process over there. And you can see, again, we have the same dilemma. Um, it's, um, if we increase the temperature of this reaction to try and produce it as quickly as possible, um, what happens is equilibrium um, will actually shift to the left because increasing the temperature um, this genius principle says it will do the opposite, which means it will try and reduce the temperature and cool it down, shift in the endothermic direction, and you produce more uh, reactants than you do products, which is not a good thing if you're wanting to make um, ethanol. But at the end of the day, if you, um, if you decrease the temperature too much, you'll produce more product, but it'll just take you ages to produce it because the rate will drop. So the compromise temperature here is 300 degrees Celsius. And again, we can come on to the pressure as well. You can see we've got two moles of gas on the left, one mole of gas on the right. So um, if we increase the pressure of this reaction, then um, equilibrium will shift to uh, reduce the pressure, and it will do that by moving to the side with the fewest gaseous moles, which in this case is on the right-hand side. So the pressure, we can increase the pressure, uh, and that will produce more products. But again, looking at the cost, high pressure costs a lot of money. Uh, and so therefore a compromise has to be made, and so that's the, uh, that's the pressure there. And just like the Haber process as well, to help speed up the rate of reaction, because the temperature is relatively low, uh, lower than it could be, then we can introduce a catalyst, uh, and again, this catalyst is um, phosphoric acid on silica, uh, and this will actually help to speed up the rate at which equilibrium is established and save a bit of money as well for the company. Okay, uh, and if we come on to the last one, which is methanol, uh, now methanol can be made by using this mixture of gas, and we call that synthesis gas, when we use hydrogen gas and carbon monoxide. Both gases, obviously, will mix them together and will produce methanol. Now, methanol was used, is used in, um, in uh, uh, Indy car racing in America, um, so it's, a very, it's really good as a fuel, it's a cleaner burning fuel than petrol, um, but um, as you can see, it's an exothermic reaction that makes this as well, um, and sometimes, actually, you can mix things like um, ethanol um, into petrols as well. You can mix them in and use it as a fuel. So again, if we just very have, have, have a very quick look at this, you can see that the forward reaction is exothermic. So I'll put exo on the top. Um, and the backwards reaction is endothermic. So we'll just shift back from there. Endothermic. Um, so again, for the same reasons as before, if we increase the temperature, um, then it will shift in the endothermic direction, which is to the left. So it's the same, exactly the same reasons. Um, so we come up with a, a compromise temperature of 250 degrees Celsius. Um, the um, pressure is 7,500 uh, 7, kilopascals. Again, for the same reasons as before, we've got three moles of gas on the left, one mole of gas on the right, increasing the pressure, shifts equilibrium to the right. Um, but again, you've got the cost implication you've got to think of. But the catalyst we use here is copper, a mixture of copper and zinc oxide, 
and aluminium oxide as well. Now, just one final thing is a lot of these reactions are actually uh, really poor yields. Um, they only average about 15, maybe even less, 20% first time round. And so actually with a lot of these reactions here, the um, reactants, in this case nitrogen and hydrogen, um, ethene and uh, steam and hydrogen carbon monoxide can be recycled, brought back round and re-reacted at the start again. So, uh, and actually, uh, because we have that ability to do that, that actually increases the, the yield. So in this case, the yield, first time round may not look so good, um, but if you keep recycling um, any unreacted reactants, then actually you produce a decent yield. And all these reactions are really useful, um, basic chemicals, um, but nonetheless, um, incredibly useful. But um, hope that helps, that's it, bye.